Halim Khan, the Prince of Kuchipudi, is one of the world's greatest practitioners of Kuchipudi dance, often taking inspiration from both Hindu tradition and Sufi music. Khan's love of classical dance has led him through almost 1,000 performances worldwide, earned him an honorary doctorate and eight other prestigious awards, and appearances in several motion pictures. He has been the subject of both a biography by L. R. Johnson and an award-winning documentary. These accomplishments reflect his passion for a dance form traditionally performed by women, and yet his style embraces feminine expression to a degree unrivaled in the world. But his devotion to the art of dance has been rewarded with a global following and tremendous success. Truly, Khan is a dancer whose performances are breathtaking. Through dance, he hopes to mirror the world's cry for peace and thus bring humanity together. Dance is not only art, it is the universe's call for harmony. Welcome to the Logophile channel. <laughs> Thank you. This is Halim Khan, who is a very... Famous, illustrious, handsome, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to include the handsome, the, the first podcast. Uh, I also called him handsome. So, you know, I have a, I have a tradition to uphold. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> a fantastic performer and uh, someone who has some very interesting things to say and to share about his career in film and dance. So, so welcome very much. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here today. We are too. Hopefully we have millions of Indians listening uh, all across the subcontinent excited about this interview. That's I, what I'm... I hoping. hope so too. Yes. <laughs> we, we started talking uh, sort of in a preliminary way, but let's, let's go back to, to that. Uh, tell me, in fact, why don't you summarize, um, isn't that a terrible Terrible thing to say. Summarize your life <laughs> in three sentences. No, uh, <laughs> that would be outrageous. Uh, tell me, tell me about yourself. For those of our listeners uh, who don't know you already, uh, you're a very famous, very uh, well respected uh, Kuchipudi dancer. And so tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Basically, you you kind of told everything. So I am. A dancer. Mm -hmm. I am living in this dance career and life since about more than 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'll do. This is what I like. This is what I think it's my life. So it's more or less I am in and around and surrounded by the dance and arts, fine arts. So that's basically my lifestyle. That's what I call it complete. Basically, that's what I do whenever I like, you know, uh, I get an opportunity and then that's mm -hmm. my, uh, slowly it has been become a career. And then um, that's what taking me all over the country and all over the globe. That's so exciting. So you were sharing with me, uh, coming from an Orthodox Muslim family, um, that your career in dancing is not necessarily something that they would be excited about. True. See, like any, any, um, any Indian family, why about uh, why talk about the only Muslim family? Sure. Uh, fine art, fine arts has been given a back seat for many mm -hmm. reasons because you will not end up having a lot of money or savings or respect or um, security, mm -hmm. all of that, and um, th which is true in the sense. But when your heart is saying so strongly something that you please go and then you know do this and do this, and I've clearly heard that many times my mind and my heart says the same thing mm. so they have like you know therefore i had to hear my heart and then listen to my mind and then go forward with what i want to do and what i love to do mm. so i did but my parents have always had this notion that this is wrong this is not to be done mm. um, forget about uh, financial things you are uh, religiously doing something wrong and uh, it's uh, it's definitely not done so there has been a couple of uh, a lot of actually issues which I forget now because we choose to forget 
because i don't want to really keep that in my mind and then have the negativity of uh, like you know whole thing so i kind of forgot many things what happened in my past but uh uh it is un it is it is a very tough uh call like you sure. know to choose fine arts in india that to be when you're coming from a muslim family it is even more hard because your beliefs your 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 culture your your community and everything thinks something else and you are now stepping into something very very different mm-hmm. like you know you are kind of going and um, uh doing something extremely unrespectful in their mindset right so right and that is what i mean and that's uh you know that's something that western families have the same concern uh in so many ways if if a 17 year old goes to their parents and says i'm going to be a professional dancer they're going to be very worried they're going to be very concerned that this is not a career that's sustainable that only the absolute elite in that field would be able to to make a living now that may not See, be my true. question is mm-hmm. yeah, you you did really answer it so nicely maybe elite elite or the best and the the perfect dancers me right so why don't you as a parent help him to grow to that stage exactly. in spite of cutting the gro- uh, grass roots in 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 the bud stage itself so i don't know that's why that's a very good point that's so, a very good point so your child wants to be an artist a cartoonist <laughs> give them art lessons you know encourage that Yeah. that uh that, that you area. you you yourself does not have confidence on your own child mm-hmm. and why would you think the goal going to have the confidence that's that's so right. that's very sad that you know we are thinking either it is a western or indian traditional we're thinking completely alike towards the fine arts mm. and you have been in in films as well and you just brought to mind that i do have a student Ethan K, you know who you are, one of my favorite students, uh who has always since he was young has been fascinated with film and his parents send him to film camps, they send send him to attend uh, workshops and things. He makes films and they have encouraged him all along the way. <laughs> I've always been so impressed with that. Even right now he's at a film school. in the summer he's not out of high school yet and they have encouraged him you know 100% all along the way so uh Ethan I hope you're listening to this and and um appreciate how amazing your parents are uh for that but yeah when you consider with film film stars are some of the richest people in the world yes. they 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 are in the top 1% of the 1% but sure there are a lot of people that go into acting and comedy and singing that never achieve uh achieve that that level of success so i i uh, can appreciate why a parent would be worried but maybe why they should maybe invest their energy instead of in worrying and encouraging yeah because the ratio is very very le- less and the success rate is very very less in the fine arts because there are less chances that you basically there is an op- less opportunity basically less opportunity and less people mm-hmm. therefore everything is less mm-hmm. so demand and supply is very very less in fine art so that's pretty common to really have the panic attack when they when, when anybody says we want to be a like you know dancer or an actor or a singer but you cannot decide that no or is for him or her it is you know you gave a birth to a child and not to their future mm. so and uh, you have physically given everything and then it is their dream their goals and this is basically everything about them not mm. you anymore mm. so you have to if you love your child up to that mark you have to believe in your kid and of course in you if you if you believe in yourself first then you can believe in your kid and if you can believe in your kid therefore as a parent even if he fails you have to be there as a supporter you know what are you parents for otherwise so tell me about kuchipudi for those who don't know what it is how would you describe it 
basically India has many cultural art forms and Kuchipudi dance is one from South India and mm-hmm. Kuchipudi dance is uh, typically uh, known from the history at least from a couple of centuries at least say 11th century or 12th century so it is that like you know age old treasure mm-hmm. there is another beautiful aspect of Kuchipudi is all male dancers used to perform as a team Mm-hmm. so when basically they are the storytellers the 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 batch of storytellers the team of storytellers so any story which requires uh like you know to have one girl or four girls or five girls or completely girls in the in the team so boys used to dress up as a women and they used to impersonate and dance that has right. been the uh like you know a traditional part of kuchipudi which no not many classical dancers of india has that kind of kind of uh, the style so i happen to be one of the uh, traditionalist who's doing the female impersonation as they used to de- do it uh, centuries back mm. so i would uh, i mean basically that is what kuchipudi is it is from south india and then you know the different part uh, like you know aspect is female impersonation in kuchipudi so i am actually taking both and and dancing kuchipudi and then doing the uh, at most traditional way and then in an antique way mm, that's right and that's you know that tradition uh, is parallel in i know in england uh, shakespearean actors used yes. to play all the mm-hmm. different parts uh in japan There's japanese dance japanese is. is the same thing so uh not not unique in the world but maybe something that still that uh especially in the modern era people might raise an eyebrow and you know say what what's going on here but uh i i saw several of your performances online last year you know yes and uh you know it's very it's it's very amazing entrancing even thank you um, thank you So tell me about the uh we and we talked about this before we were recording you you have some sufi influence in your in your dance um uh not so not not as an influence uh, oh, oh, basically sorry. kuchipudi is very dominantly hindu right uh style of singing mythology and culture wise it is hindu and you know uh, tradition a uh, sufi where as in it actually tells you completely different things about the god about the muslim com- uh, culture and things like that so as a person who who's got both in me i was born in muslim family and then raised myself in dance so i would like to ha- bring the culture harmony in what i do so therefore i have picked up few sufi songs and then want to blend through kuchipudi performances oh, i see i see So I I've kind of fused that those those two forms and then came out many times very well and then uh many times it has been taken so well and because you know that's what I wanted to say to the world you know out there so uh, forget about you pushing your kid or like you know one one aspect is having the fine arts as a professional level and other other thing is once you become a professional you are a responsible person Right. So you are you will be standing in a position to give a message to people and influence people and tell what is good what is bad to the people. So as a, as a, as a professional dancer I feel it is my responsibility to preach what I know. So I always up for I always stand for the community which is together and which is so beautifully as diverse and we are Indians and uh, known as very diverse diverse country you know mm-hmm. have many many languages and cultures and one roof and then we are happy but many a times in the world we really have this problem like you know we hear every now and then one like you know i mean i don't have to really say where it happened how it happened everybody knows the hate crime sure so i would wanted to bring out in what little capacity that i have the small little beautiful message like you know be together and that's the beauty mm. you know if you are the same person of a copy paste and copy paste there is no beauty the beauty lies in the diversity mm. 
during our uh, first podcast, Jeff Reedy and I were talking about Rumi. Oh, that's fantastic, yes. And so I wondered if you have done any Rumi songs. Uh, I'm or... so close to do Rumi uh, because, um, yes, when I started the Sufi, I always wanted to, uh, like, you know, the poetry of Rumi is 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 out of the world, <laughs> is out of the world. And we, I we, said, we agree. We agreed with you. He <laughs> said top five in the world yes. ever. So I yeah. would I would like to really take uh, that. I have actually experimented with Keats and Rossetti and uh, and Rabindranath Tagore. Oh yeah. And uh, Sarojini Naidu, who's another like you know writer. So, uh, but never uh, Rumi. I am so close to do that. I I have the uh, next priority. For Rumi. That's, that's fantastic. Because time has to come, you know. Right amount of the time, right amount of the sponsorship, right amount of the energy, right amount of audience, basically. It's an art that I can take Rumi poetry and do it in the streets of some small village. But, of course, we can do. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can always take the poetry and then make it, make it easy for many through dance. But uh, perhaps... I have not done that. I would like to do that. Oh, that's fantastic. You got me all excited. Uh, and Rumi's poetry is so much about freedom and, yes, and, it, and the individual and the same themes that you've been talking about to it. today. So where do you typically perform or is there a typical place? I, I imagine in some temples and then in some larger venues and things, but... Tell me where where do you where do you like to perform and see basically um, there's uh, it these uh, these art forms took a birth from temples right it is all very connected when we go back in our traditions yes we do very much perform in temples we do very much perform in wherever the uh, happy occasions are uh, and then few conferences mm-hmm. in educational conferences mm-hmm. and uh, many government uh, related festivals and few privately organized uh, huge festivals are there in India or after India and then we perform there so even in America we have a lot of Telugu associations and then all the Indian associations that we have they they will have yearly annual huge events which like you know takes a place and then you know many many dancers come from India and then you know, take a part and then any yeah, Many artists will come and take a part in that. So, basically, that is what it is. We do not have, like, a Broadway shows, like, where we have one theme which will run in the hall for about one month or ten days and everybody will come in the evening and watch. Unfortunately, uh, on our on our growth, like, YouTube actually taken a lot of, uh, like, you know, uh, whatever little sustainability artist has, YouTube has been actually taken that and uh, and many social medias have been because people got used to Netflix and the YouTube and many other tubes so it's gone under the tube so the fine arts whatever the original fine arts gone like you know gone under the tube basically down the tube oh yeah many oh, because okay. you know if an audience thinks i can see all of this in YouTube or Netflix so they would not really come up and you know in a traditional way and drive and then come and park and then I see, see your performance live. There is always a live impact is different, you know. Mm-hmm. So these art forms typically works on your brain if you allow them to. You know, you'll be a very sensitive person. Mm-hmm. You'll be a very thoughtful person. You'll be a very graceful person. You will be very sought after person you will be very empathetic person and you will be a good person and you will be a finer person so basically if you allow all this to happen through art form you will Mm. otherwise if you are like you know encouraged by or only um like you know with the metallic sounds or maybe you know with the with with the hard things you know which is like like music which almost kills you mm. so that will not really have any effect on your heart or brain you know we have proofs that indian music uh 
any classical music will give you a lot of therapeutic uh, like you know healing to That's your right. brain and system but no proof ever really came the hard rock or any <laughs> right. any 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 huge uh, metallic sounds with in fact they damage mm. but unfortunately we all like many like to go to them because they can be participant they can they can they can involve themselves and forget their problems that they think mm-hmm. or have a drink and kind of you know shake their body you know so and for this is this is unfortunate that uh, we are not being very refined people we are actually going in other direction that's uh, you know that's really interesting in in philosophy um nietzsche you, you know nietzsche uh talked about the apollonian and the dionysian and the idea that the dionysian urge that's that's what in a way you're talking about with the heavy metal and punk rock and things yes you can go you can go and jump and scream and and you lose yourself into it you lose yourself <laughs> but it sounds like that the art forms the classical art forms that you describe and like your dance really engages your mind that's the apollonian that it's it's more up here than it is you know uh yeah. an external uh an external thing and that's 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 perhaps something that more people should consider as we become so distracted by all the digital media and things that we need more experiences and not just to be an audience yes basically um uh, of my life philosophy is um life should not be measured by the breath that you take it should be measured by the moments that takes a breath away so in that sense we have to be greedy in collecting those moments not doing something very ordinary ordinary very well said very well said well you have just to uh, inform our our uh, listeners a little bit you have performed over 850 times around the world you've received eight awards for your dance received an honorary doctorate is that right and uh you've appeared in eight motion pictures uh, all before you know all by the age of 32 which makes me feel very embarrassed for not having accomplished more and you already have a biography uh a german author lr johnson wrote a biography that will include the link uh, below in the description so people can read all about your entire life story, your journey in dance, uh, To Dance or Not to Dance is the title of that book, and also the subject of an award-winning documentary at the Calcutta Film Festival. I just feel so fortunate that we've had the chance to, to talk to you and uh, even just uh, share a moment with you, um, world friends, but <laughs> I still feel very fortunate uh, that you have been able to make time for us today. Is there anything in particular that you would like to promote or uh, share with our, our listeners? Um, you know, this podcast will probably go up in the next two to three weeks. I would basically nothing so personal that I should promote. I mean, luckily God has been giving small little chances to do it. Mm-hmm. But I would like to take this opportunity and then uh, speak about try and take a few moments to make yourself happy and and make your life worth worthwhile don't really run and chase and work like machines and i'm sure we all need money but end of the day when you look back and see god has not created you to be a machine and he has sent you to the beautiful earth to enjoy the nature to enjoy the people out there and uh to don't forget that and Mm -hmm. then do not really run in the roller coaster where you do not see basically you will be you'll be actually aiming i mean running towards the aimless goal so i'm so sorry if if i have offended anybody but but i do think please take few moments 
think what you really really like and i just stop caring what others may think about you and all of that enjoy the way you wanted enjoy let your kids enjoy the way they wanted and if of course everything safe <laughs> very good thank you so much you for, most for welcome. sharing and i'm today. i'm very happy that i got an opportunity to talk and give my voice and then give my views very good well uh folks i hope you've enjoyed this uh, this podcast our second uh hopefully of many uh we're looking forward to several new authors and artists and professors <laughs> uh as well so uh we will see you next time thank you very much thank you so much namaste namaste